While browsing awards for inspiration recently, I came across a site that had just won site of the day on August 5th. It featured some standout animations, but the one that really caught my eye was the scroll effect, where the text expands to fill the entire viewport as you scroll. Toward the end, it transitions into a 3D zoom while fading out, revealing a background video underneath. The way the text stretched and moved through space felt really dynamic, so I decided to rebuild this animation from scratch. After a few hours of experimenting with different approaches, I ended up building this scroll experience that captures the essence of that animation, not just the text stretching effect, but also the final sequence where the text scales forward in 3D and fades out as the background reveals itself. In this video, I'll walk you through how to create this kind of scroll animation using GSAP and Scroll Trigger. If you find my work helpful, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you'd like to access the source code for this project along with hundreds of other similar micro projects and a complete new website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's dive in. Let's start with the structure. First, I'm adding a hero section at the top of the page. This is going to act as our intro frame before the scroll animation begins. Then, at the very end of the page, I am adding an outro section. Same idea, this will be the last screen the user sees once the scroll animation is done. Now inside both of these sections, I will drop an h1 element just using some quick placeholder text here. This makes sure the sections don't feel empty while we are scrolling through. Next, let's create the main animated sections. So I will use emit to quickly scaffold out the html for that. We are going to need 3 sticky scroll sections. So I will add 3 section tags with the class names sticky text 1, 2 and 3. Inside each of them, I will add a div with the class text container and within that an h1. This is the word that will stretch and animate as we scroll. As the structure is ready, I will add some placeholder words inside each heading. Inside the third sticky section, we will also need a background image that gets revealed at the end of the scroll. So right before the text container, I will add a div with the class background image and throw an image inside it that will sit behind the animated text. And finally, I am also adding one more div inside the third section, this one with the class header. It will hold the final line of text that appears word by word as the animation ends. That's everything we need for the HTML structure. Let's move on to the CSS. I am starting off by importing a Google font. I am using Roboto Condensed. It has this tall, clean look that works really well for large animated text. Next, I am setting up two color variables. One dark greenish shade for backgrounds and one bright green for highlights and text. We'll use these consistently across the layout. Then, I am doing a basic reset, removing default margins and padding, and setting box sizing model so everything is easier to control. For the body, I am applying the font we just imported. Images are set to fully cover their containers, both in width and height, and crop nicely so they don't stretch weirdly. Now I'll style the main headings. They'll be all uppercase, really bold, and tightly spaced. I'm centering the text and making the font size pretty large so it fills the screen nicely. Each section on the page will take up the entire height of the viewport. I am also giving them relative positioning and hiding overflow that's going to help later when we start layering and animating elements inside. For the hero and outro sections, I am centering everything both horizontally and vertically using flexbox. The background color is dark and the text color is bright green we defined earlier. Next, I'll style the three animated sections, the ones with big scroll text. The first two use a bright background with dark text that contrast helps the words pop as you scroll. The third section has light colored text and we layer in a dark background behind it using a separate image container. Now I'll style the containers for the text and background image. Both are absolutely positioned to fill the entire screen. They are stacked on top of each other. I am also optimizing them for animation so we get smoother performance later on. The main text starts off squashed vertically, we will animate the stretch with javascript. I have also anchored the scaling from the top so the text grows downward as you scroll. Each scroll section has its own text size and weight to give a unique feel. The first one is thinner and slightly smaller. The second one is larger and the third one is bold and super eye-catching. 
Depending on the words you use, you might need to tweak these font sizes a bit just to make sure the text fills the screen nicely without overflowing or looking too tight. In the third section, I'm also adding a dark background behind the text to match the intro and outro sections. Now for the final headline, the one that appears word by word at the end. I'm absolutely centering it in the middle of the screen and layering it above everything else. To finish up, I'm adding a simple mobile adjustment. On smaller screens, I'm reducing the text size and slightly widening the layout to make sure everything still looks good. I forgot to make sure the text inside these sections is limited to around half the width of the screen to keep it readable and clean. And that's it for the CSS setup. Now we have got the structure, layout and all the styling ready. Let's jump into the JavaScript. Before we start writing any JavaScript, let me quickly walk you through how the animation is going to work. The core idea is that as we scroll down the page, each word, one in each section, is going to stretch vertically to fill the entire screen. We are animating that stretch by scaling the text upward along the y-axis. At the start of each section, the text is completely compressed. It looks almost flat and then as we scroll into that section, it gradually expands, giving it this really smooth unfolding effect. Once it's fully expanded, we keep it on screen for a moment by pinning the section in place. Then, as we continue scrolling, the word shrinks back down, making room for the next one to stretch in. We repeat this process for all three sections, each word growing in, holding for a bit and then shrinking out. And finally, in the last section, instead of just shrinking, we add an extra twist. The text scales up dramatically, like it's zooming forward in 3D space while fading out at the same time. Behind it, a background image starts to appear and once the text disappears completely, a headline fades in word by word to end the animation. So it's a layered scroll effect, part stretch, part zoom, part fade, all tied to how far you have scrolled. Let's move on to the code and start setting things up step by step. The first thing I'll do is import all the libraries we'll be using in this project. We are bringing in GSAP, which is going to handle all of our animations. Then we are importing scroll trigger from GSAP plugin library. This will allow us to connect those animations directly to the user's scroll progress. Next, I'm importing split text, which we'll use at the very end when we need to split our headline into individual words so we can fade them in one by one. And finally, I'm importing Lennis. This is a lightweight smooth scroll library that replaces the browser's default scroll behavior with a much more fluid and eased version. Now I'll wrap everything inside a DOM content loaded event. This just means we are waiting until the full HTML structure is loaded and ready before we run any code. Inside this event, the first thing I'll do is register the scroll trigger and split text plugins with GSAP. That step is required anytime you are using GSAP plugins. Registering them just makes them available for us to use inside the GSAP environment. Next, we'll set up Lennis. For this part, I'm pasting in a short block of code directly from the Lennis documentation. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you'll know I usually use this exact block whenever I want smooth scrolling. Normally, scroll trigger listens to native scroll events, but since we are using a custom scroll engine now, we need to manually tell it when to update. That's why we call scroll triggers update function whenever Lennis scrolls. You don't need to modify any of this. It's a standard setup and works as is across most projects. All right, with that out of the way, I'll select the DOM elements that we are going to animate. First, I'm grabbing the three large headlines, one for each sticky section since these are the elements that are going to stretch and scale as we scroll. Then, I'm selecting the full text container from the third section. That one has some extra effects like zooming and fading, so we'll need to reference the container itself for those transitions. After that, I'm grabbing the final headline inside the header element. That's the line of text that will be revealed word by word right at the end. And finally, I'm using JavaScript to grab the dark background color variable we defined earlier in our CSS. We are going to use this color when animating the background fade on scroll. So we need to pull it into JavaScript and keep it handy. That finishes up the basic setup. Next, we'll figure out how much we need to scale each heading in order to make it fill the viewport perfectly. Now, before we get to that, I'll set up the split text animation for the final headline. First, I'm declaring a variable to store the split text instance. Then, I'm checking if that headline element actually exists on the page. If it does, I'm using the split text plugin to split it into individual words. Each word is wrapped in its own span element and I'm giving all of them a custom class just in case if we need them later. Right after that, I'm setting the opacity of all words to zero that makes sure they stay hidden until we are ready to reveal them later in the animation. 
Next, I'm setting up a system that helps us scale the big word smoothly based on the actual size of the screen. To do that, I'm creating an empty array called target scales. This is where we'll store the exact scale value needed for each heading to fully fill the viewport. Then, I'm writing a function to calculate those values dynamically. Inside that function, I'm looping through all three sections one by one. For each section, I'm selecting the section itself and the heading inside it. If either of those isn't found for some reason, we just skip to the next one. Now here is the key part. For each section, I'm getting its height, which is always equal to the height of the viewport and dividing it by the height of the heading inside it. That gives us the exact scaling factor we'll need to apply to that heading so it stretches perfectly to fill the screen. We store that value in the target scales array and we'll use it later when we animate each section. Once the function is defined, I'll call it right away to get the initial values. And I also set up an event listener so that every time the window resizes, the function runs again. This keeps the animation responsive across different screen sizes and ensures the text always scales correctly. Finally, I'm writing a helper function that takes in an element and a scale value and simply updates its transform style to stretch it vertically. This makes it easier to apply the scaling logic later without repeating the same code over and over. Alright, the setup is ready. Next, we'll hook everything up to scroll trigger and start animating these scale effects as we scroll through the page. Let's begin with the first scroll section, the one that shows the word overdrive. For each section, I'm actually creating two scroll triggers. One is for scaling the word up as it enters the viewport and the other is for scaling it back down as it leaves. So first, I'll create a scroll trigger that starts when the top of the section hits the bottom of the viewport and ends when that same top edge reaches the top of the screen. This is the scroll range where the text will grow. Inside the onUpdate callback, I'm calculating the current scale by multiplying the target scale value we computed earlier with the scroll progress. That gives us a smooth scale up effect as we scroll through that section. Now, the second trigger is responsible for shrinking the word back down. This one starts when this section reaches the top of the viewport and I'm pinning it in place for the full height of the screen. Pinning basically freezes the section while the scroll continues which gives us a chance to animate the scale back down in a controlled way. The scroll progress now goes in reverse so I'm scaling the word from full size back down to zero using one minus the progress. This creates a seamless grow in and shrink out effect within the same section. Next, I'll do the same thing for the second section, the one with the word static. Again, I'm setting up one scroll trigger to handle the scale in as the section scrolls into view and another one to pin the section and scale the word back down as the scroll continues. The logic is identical to the first one. We are using the progress value to scale the text up and then scaling it back down once the section is pinned. This combination of grow, hold and shrink gives the whole experience a really smooth rhythm, almost like each word is unfolding and collapsing in place. Finally, I'll set up the first scroll trigger for the third section, the one with the word friction. For now, I'm only setting up the scale in effect, just like we did for the first two. We'll handle the more complex spinning and 3D zoom for this one separately in the next block. So here, I'm using the same scroll range, starting when the section enters the viewport and ending when it hits the top, and I'm scaling the text up based on scroll progress. Alright, that gives us smooth scaling and scale out animations for the first two sections and a clean grow in for the third one. Next, we'll build the final, more dramatic animation for the last section where the text zooms forward, fades out and reveals the headline. So let's set up the final scroll trigger and this one is the most complex out of the entire animation. It's tied to the third section, the one that shows the word friction and we are using this block to create the full outro sequence. We'll animate a dramatic zoom on the text, fade out the background, reveal the image underneath and then finally bring in our headline word by word. Let me walk you through every part of how this works. First, we are triggering this section when it hits the top of the viewport. We are pinning it in place just like we did for the previous sections. But this time, instead of pinning it for one screen height, we are keeping it pinned for a much longer scroll, four times the height of the viewport. That gives us enough scroll space to fit multiple animation bits inside this one section. Inside the onUpdate callback function, we start by getting the current scroll progress, which is a value that goes from 0 to 1 as we move through the full pinned area. The first thing we check is whether progress is at 0, meaning we have just entered the section. 
If that's true, we reset the background color of the text container to a dark color and we set the opacity back to full. This makes sure everything looks clean and consistent when the animation starts. Next, we handle the zoom animation. For this, we are watching the progress value from 0 up to 75%. We take that progress, divide it by 0.75 and use it to calculate a scaling factor. So the text container starts at its original size and then scales up dramatically all the way to 10 times its size as we scroll. This creates that bold 3D zoom forward effect as if the text is rushing toward the viewer. If we scroll past 75%, we just lock the scale at its maximum so it doesn't grow any further. Now, we move on to animating the background fade. From 0 to 25% of the scroll, it's still using the dark color we set earlier. But once we hit that 25% mark, we start fading it out gradually. Between 25 and 50%, we calculate a fade amount using the scroll progress. That fade is applied to the alpha value of the background color, making it more and more transparent as we scroll. And then after 50%, we fully remove the background color. At that point, the dark overlay disappears completely and the image behind it becomes fully visible. This creates a smooth transition from a solid background to a layered visual with a zoom text floating over the image. Now while that's happening, we are also handling the fade out of the text container itself that starts right at the halfway point when progress reaches 50% and finishes at 75%. We calculate how far into that range we are and use it to reduce the opacity of the text. This gives the effect of the zoomed in text fading away gradually as it scales forward. Then comes the final step, the headline animation. This only runs if we previously split the headline using split text. We check if that split exists and also make sure there are words available to animate. If that's true, we start animating the opacity of each word individually. This happens between 75 and 95% of the scroll progress. As we scroll through that range, we compute a value for how far into the sequence we are and then compare it to each word's position in the sequence. Words earlier in the line appear first and the rest follow based on their index. This creates a smooth word by word fade in timed exactly to the user's scroll. If we scroll back up, we hide the words again by resetting their opacity and if we scroll all the way to the end, beyond 95%, we make sure all the words are fully visible. That wraps up the full outro sequence. All of it is controlled purely by scroll and every piece is tried precisely to progress. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.